Welcome to Goal Setting for Real Completion, presented by Elite Leadership Coaching by Andrea. I am your hostess and facilitator, Andrea White. I'm a leadership and business coach for over 20 years now. And uh, my clients are typically corporate and nonprofit professionals and small business owners who feel stuck, unclear, or don't have the support needed to increase their leadership intelligence, influence, income, position, and power. So frequently my clients um, just take control of their careers uh, to do the things that are necessary to build their knowledge and skills uh, to prepare for the next uh, elevation in their career. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity and a, a something that I'm really proud of and um, really enjoy working with my clients and uh, seeing uh, their growth and progress uh, in their personal and professional space. And so over the next half hour or so, we are going to be talking about goal setting. And frequently people, you know, set goals for themselves and, um, it, you know, more likely than not, um, they don't necessarily um, meet the goals that they set for themselves. So I hope in the next half hour or so, the things that we talk about, the knowledge, the skills um, that are introduced, that you really take hold of them and put them into practice so that, um, you know, the goals that you set for yourself uh, in a professional perspective or personal perspective, uh, that, that you're really able to move the needle um, in order to meet the goals that you set for yourself. Okay, so a couple of things that we're going to cover. Uh, we'll talk about goal setting, how you can use goal setting to realize your ambitions while building your self-confidence and motivation. We will also uh, talk about breaking down lifetime goals into manageable shorter term ones. Frequently that is an obstacle in terms of people have really large lofty goals, but are unable to break them down into smaller bites um, for success. We will also spend some time talking about SMART goals, what they are, and how you can use them to increase your chances of success. Uh, and that is a really key skill uh, and something that makes it really easy for you to meet your goals. And then we'll talk a little bit about the importance of reviewing your goals, checking your progress, and looking out for any obstacles that may be in your way, uh, that may get in your way for um, being successful. And so one of the things I want you to think about is have you ever felt uh, that you're sort of drifting from day to day without any sense of direction? Or are you someone with firm ambitions for your career, family, uh, or personal achievements? Almost everyone wants to make progress in life in some way. We might have dreams of promotion, traveling, or going on a spending spree. Uh, we could even aspire to learn a language or spend more time with our family and friends. Or maybe we're just kind of itching to use our leadership skills to transform our neighborhood, our communities. Our ambitions are often many and varied and can be, you know, big or small, but why do we struggle to achieve them? Often we fail because we haven't made and followed a definite plan for success. And so in the next half hour, um, we're going to talk about some very powerful tools and uh, to help you to meet some of us uh, to meet your goals. Uh, you'll need to spend some time after this course to set your goals. Okay, so we're going to move on and get started. So why is it important to set goals? Um, you know, this seems to be sort of a no-brainer. 
Um, but it's really important for us to set a really good foundation first. You don't want to waste your efforts on things that aren't really important to you and you aren't getting any closer to where you want to be. Um, and so you can first start off by setting a long-term vision uh, and by making steps towards that long-term vision through short-term actions, you actually increase your motivation. Uh, setting goals can also help you to organize your time and your resources. Um, and it's a process that helps you recognize your progress. And frequently, uh, we forget to actually celebrate either along the way as we um, meet some of our mini goals, and then definitely as we meet the larger goal, we forget to celebrate. And uh, as a part of my professional practice, you know, I always encourage my clients uh, I always build in milestones for us to actually celebrate any progress uh, that they've made. And so celebrating and checking in is a really important part of setting goals. Uh, an additional thing I want you to think about about why it's important to set goals, I want you to think about imagine if you wanted to write a book and your deadline is one year away and so with something with such a far off deadline, it could be really easy to procrastinate. But setting goals and milestones, breaking it down into chunks, will help ensure you reach the goal of having the book completed on time. And hopefully with even a little time to spare. So for example, you might aim to write one chapter each month for nine months. Uh, you'll need maybe six weeks to research and plan your plot first, and at the end, you could spend three weeks reviewing and proofreading your work. That leaves a month for family commitments, holidays, or if things, um, unforeseen, unforeseen things come up. Uh, and so, you know, when you think about such a large, you know, project with a faraway deadline, the the better you can back into a timeline uh, with milestones and steps, the more likely it is that you will actually be successful. And so that's why it's really important to um, set some goals. And so a couple of uh, exercises we'll do uh, throughout this particular course. And so the first thing I want you to think about is what are two goals uh, you need to complete by the end of the week. Uh, and so either in your professional planner or journal, jot those down, or if you're taking notes with this course, go ahead and jot down two goals that you need to complete by the end of the week. And we actually are going to come back to those um, after we do a little bit of um, knowledge building to see how you set up this um, these two goals okay so you can either pause and write those down or go through the whole course and then come back and do that uh, but I want you to uh, first go ahead and just jot down those two goals okay and then we're gonna move on and um, one of the key uh, aspects of goal setting is setting and managing goals. And so you have to really think about the big, big picture, your big vision. Um, sometimes it's called a big hairy goal. Uh, what is that? Uh, and as you think about that big picture and you're thinking about a vision for yourself, you might think about important areas of your personal and professional life and then set goals in each area. And we'll get into a little bit of an exercise to look at those different areas in just a second. Um, with high quality goals in place and a plan to achieve them, you'll be able to identify and then also reject activities that distract you from your ultimate aims uh, when you're setting and managing goals. Uh, you'll also be more likely to recoup the time and effort you invested in setting the goals in the first place if you have a really good concrete plan in place. So it's best to put in the time up front uh, 
and then let it keep you on track. And the time that it took you up front, you'll get it back in the long run as you follow um, your goal path. Ask yourself where you want to be and what you want to be doing in the distant future. As ideas start to come into focus, check that they are your goals and not what other people want you to achieve. Um, let yourself dream. And so another very common challenge that my clients have is um, sort of living their life according to uh, the expectations of others. And so uh, when you when I talk through my bio about people feeling stuck and unclear, the root of that is usually because they have taken on other people's expectations and desires for them. So as you think about goals, think about goals for yourself. You know, what is it that you would like to do? What is it that you would like to be? What is, um, what would you like your career uh, to look like? So make sure that you're focusing on things that you want to achieve, not um, what others want you to achieve. Okay, and so as you're setting and managing goals and you've thought about this really big picture, it's really crucial that you write it down. Uh, and so again, that's the importance of having a professional planner or journal. Be sure not to let self-doubt limit your aspirations. Uh, for example, you might believe that you have little control over your own destiny, or you may feel like an unworthy imposter. And so those are also two very common challenges that my clients have as well. Uh, Self-doubt, just not having the confidence that they can actually um, be a leader, be a senior executive leader. Um, and, you know, a lot of that, again, comes from uh, managing the expectations and judgments that other people have placed on them. And so I want to encourage you to not let self-doubt to creep in. Okay, so we're going to look at a few prompts on the next slide um, and go through just a couple of different categories and think about um, are there opportunities for long-term goals in each of these categories. So looking through your, uh, look through your long-term goals carefully. See whether you can remove any, for example, because they are not truly significant or because you can merge some closely related ones. So sometimes maybe, um, you know, career and attitude can go hand in hand or family and attitude can go hand in hand, just depending upon your situation. And then at the end, you should be left with a list of goals that you care about and that excite you. If you aren't excited, if you aren't fired up, then you probably need to dig a little deeper and think a little bigger. Okay, so I want you to look at the category, uh, career, for example, uh, and think about what would be your lifetime goal as it relates to your career. What kind of work would you find most interesting and worthwhile? It may not be work that you're doing right now. It may not be work that you'll be doing in the next two or three years. Uh, but overall, if you, you know, you're just sort of big, hairy vision goal, what uh, kind of work would you like to see for yourself um, as a lifetime goal? So in your professional planner or journal, um, be sure to jot that down, or you can use the empty blocks that are on this slide. And then you would just do the same thing for each of the categories that follow under career. So family, for instance, how and where would you like to live with the people you care about? And again, that may not be where you live right now. Um, you may have another uh, ideal living destination for yourself. And so where is that? And when would you like to live there by? Is it in three years? Is it in four? Is it next year? Uh, and then I want you to do the same thing for finance, public service, and attitude. 
uh, just go ahead and jot down some lifetime goals in each of those categories. Uh, and we'll tie this all up uh, shortly. Okay, so based on these lifetime goals, uh, you need to take that lifetime goal and then use it to set smaller goals. Uh, and so let's take, for instance, if a lifetime career goal of someone was to own a chain of award-winning fine dining restaurants, they, that's their ultimate lifetime goal is to, award, um, to own these fine dining restaurants. But what does that look like in five years? So their five-year goal would be to become a head chef, for instance. And then what would they need to do in six months and in one year that would help them to become a head chef, which would ultimately get them to their lifetime goal? And so this is the way that I really want to encourage you to think about goal setting. And we'll get more specific as we go forward. But I want you to think really, really big um, for your lifetime goal and then chunk that down by five at a five year increment is usually a good sort of space, uh, a one year increment and then a six month in, in, uh, increment. By definition, lifetime goals involve a really long term approach. You can't achieve it in one grand action. Instead, you'll need to complete a series of smaller actions that take you forward gradually. And so that's why we have the six months, one year, and five years. So once you've really crystallized that lifetime goal, you um, want to take uh, look at and figure out smaller steps, which are quite easy to identify. And then as you take each step, you'll gain the sense of well-being that makes goal setting such a really powerful technique uh, when it's done uh, really, really well. Um, okay, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper, but hopefully that gives you a sense of um, you know, what it means to look at something uh, at, a, at a really, you know, sort of long-term view and how to chunk that down. Okay, so this is a little space for your own case study. Uh, so I want you to consider your lifetime career goal. Um, from the previous slide, and then I want you to break it down into a five-year and a one-year goal. And again, you can use the space on the slide if you have printed this or if you have a professional plan or a journal. I want you to um, do the exercise uh, uh, in your journal. Choose time frames that suit your situation. For instance, if you're about to spend the next six years studying for a degree, a six-year goal might actually be more appropriate than a five-year one. So really you can, you know, um, adjust uh, this, this um, template to what fits your situation. Once you've broken down your lifetime goal into smaller time frames, think about the actions that will take you there. Break large tasks down into smaller action steps to make it more manageable. Uh, action, steps, action steps should take no longer than one to two hours to complete. And so action steps are different from goals, okay? Action steps are things, just tasky, you know, task-oriented kinds of things that you may need to do day by day or week by week to meet a month's goal or a two month goal or a three month goal. Um, and so you wanna make sure to keep your actions on a to-do list and then use your calendar on your phone or if you have a hard copy planner, um, use those things to help um, keep you on track, uh, including, you know, reminders and task lists and things like that. You know, in this day and age, there's so many um, apps and resources uh, that can help us stay on track. 
Uh, we just have to be very intentional and consistent about using those things to reach our ultimate goals. Intention and consistency. Now I want to talk about a really powerful uh, technique uh, for setting your goals. Uh, and so depending upon maybe what you studied in school or maybe the job that you do at work, um, you may already be familiar with SMART goals. Um, but SMART goals are, um, it's really a mnemonic uh, that makes your goals even more powerful. While there are plenty of variants uh, of what each letter stands for, you'll see that on, you see that on the slide. Specific goals are uh, uh, unambiguous and they're behavioral. They state precisely what is expected without leaving any wiggle room. Uh, so when you're writing out your goals for your S, it has to be very specific based on behavior, and so it's based on action, no wiggle room. Uh, your M for measurable or meaningful. Measurable goals include a detailed statement of what the end point is so that you know when you have achieved the goal. It's very clear. Uh, the A in SMART is attainable or action-oriented. Attainable goals are, uh, are actually possible to achieve and within your control. Uh, and so uh, you don't want to make a goal for yourself and it's not even realistic. It's not something that you could ever achieve. Uh, and so you want to make sure that the goals that you set for yourself are actually realistic and that you can um, actually get it done. It may take a long time, but it doesn't mean that it can't get it done. Um, the R in SMART goals stands for relevant or rewarding. Relevant goals are those that support your life plan. Uh, and so that's why we had earlier the different parts of your life, career, family, finance, attitude, uh, and, you know, there could be other things that are relevant to your life, health and fitness, mental health, um, community service. Uh, so whatever things are really important to you uh, that match your life values, you can make a goal for that. Uh, and you do that through making uh, your goals relevant uh, to those that support your life plan. The T in SMART goals stands for time bound or trackable. Time bound goals state exactly how long they should take to complete. If you don't achieve a goal in the time frame you specify, uh, it's perfectly okay to amend the goal uh, or dismiss it and move on or move it to a different uh, time frame. Uh, you know, while we're talking about SMART goals, uh, it's also important to understand to be flexible and that your situation and circumstance may change that cause your goals to change and things that are relevant to you to change. Um, you may come across something that really, um, that you hadn't ever really worked with before and it sparks a new interest. And so you have to create new goals and that's perfectly okay. So let's look at a non-SMART goal and a SMART goal. A non-SMART goal, uh, you know, won't be helpful to you very much and you'll get very little motivation from it because it's so general and broad in nature. Uh, and so you may have a goal of just, you know, you know, I want to, you want to get a promotion. Okay, so using our SMART uh, mnemonic, uh, you'll, it, could, it would be reworded to say you want to have the qualifications and experience to be eligible for promotion to the level of department director at the January review meeting. So you see the goal becomes much more powerful 
when you write it this way. It's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's time bound. And one of the things that you may have to break down even further uh, in this SMART goal is, you know, what are the qualifications and what are the experience? You may have to back out of that a little bit more and be more specific. Um, but uh, when you look at the SMART goal, uh, the way that it's written is a lot more powerful. It gives you an idea of what you should be doing and should be doing it by when. Um, and so now I want you to go to your lifetime five-year and one-year career goals that you did previously. Uh, and even uh, where you wrote down the two goals that you have to complete in the next week. Did you write those in a smart format already? Uh, if you did not, I want you to take some time and rewrite them so that they meet the uh, so that they meet the SMART criteria. And in doing so, uh, you are much more likely to have success in meeting that goal. And that's ultimately what um, we all want, especially as leaders. Um, if you have the responsibility of leading, inspiring, and motivating a team, uh, whether you're a formal or informal leader, it is vital that you know how to set goals, uh, and you know how to track goals, you know what needs to be done, you know what needs to be done by when, uh, and then you're able to have sort of a roadmap uh, so that the team knows that they're making successful prog progress. Okay, so now we want to talk about common obstacles to um, goals that we set for ourselves. Once you've set your goals, there should be nothing to stop you from achieving them. Uh, however, in reality, there are some things that can get in the way and so we're going to look at a few common obstacles and how to manage them. Um, be sure to keep your goals and your to-do list or your action plan up to date and relevant. Uh, don't let them fade away. Uh, you want to look at them every day. Like I said earlier, you know, use your uh, calendars, use reminders, use your task list, uh, either in your professional planner or on your phone. Um, and then be sure that all your energies are going into what's in, important to you for today as well as for your future. Uh, keep your lifetime goals in mind um, by displaying them on, you know, big and colorful. I have a, a really colorful bulletin board in front of my desk. Uh, it has my goals on it. Uh, all kinds of colors. It's something that I look at every day. It helps to keep me inspired um, when things get really tough. Um, so, you know, those are a couple of things that you can do overall uh, to, to overcome some of those common obstacles uh, using, you know, uh, to-do lists, um, having your um, task right out in front of you somewhere every day, uh, using reminders. Uh, some other common obstacles include self-sabotage. And unfortunately, sometimes people, and I'll, I'll actually group self-sabotage and fear of failure um, together. Uh, sometimes based upon a person's history, um, actually being successful, meeting goals um, is scary to them. Uh, and so they may actually do things that are not supportive of meeting their goals um, because they're afraid of success um, and therefore self-sabotage. Uh, some people also won't set goals because they don't want to face uh, the fact that maybe they don't meet those goals and, and you know, so they don't want to face uh, failure in that way. And one of the things that's really important to think about as you set goals for yourself is A, it's, it's okay and it's, it's quite appropriate to be flexible. Uh, 
your goals, your interests, your situations and circumstances change. Like what it looks like today may be different in two or three months. And so that may actually require a change in your goals and that's okay. That is not failure. It's just the fact of life that things change. And so the more flexible you are, the better. Another really common obstacle that my clients uh, face is not having a supportive circle of family, friends, and colleagues. Uh, and actually, this is probably one of the number one reasons um, why people um, seek out my services and um, you know, we enter into a coaching agreement. Uh, it's because they sort of just decide, you know, to take control of their career, take control of where it is they want to go. Uh, and they, you know, need some help with knowing what they need to know to do those things because they aren't surrounded by people um, that can help them or that will help them. Uh, and so in that case, of course, you can um, get a coach. You can um, try to find different networks uh, in your community, create a new network for yourself, a new circle of friends and colleagues. You can find online groups. Uh, of course, there, there are tons of those so that you can be around like-minded people. Um, but, you know, by far, uh, the not supportive circle of family and friends is, is really one that uh, is quite, quite common. Um, and so <clears throat> you can, especially when it comes to uh, self-sabotage, fear of failure, fear of success. Um, you can do a couple of different things to protect yourself against those unhelpful thoughts and behaviors. Uh, you can use affirmations, um, uh, mindfulness practices, um, keep on, keeping a journal, um, rewarding yourself when you actually meet one of your action steps, and then you want to celebrate every time you achieve a goal or, um, you know, one of your milestones. And in doing that, you actually um, enhance your motivation, enhance your inspiration, and it helps to keep you going. So finally, just in summary, um, you want to brainstorm and set goals for all the important areas of your life. Uh, and so while I tend to focus on career and professional goals, you can also have goals for yourself um, in your finances, uh, we said earlier, um, for your education, training, uh, increasing your expertise. Uh, and so uh, think about all of the relevant areas of your life uh, and uh, where you would be interested in setting some goals. Effective goal setting will actually bring you uh, a, a long-term vision, better day-to-day -day focus, increased self-confidence and motivation, and the achievement of your goals. Uh, goal setting is really widely considered to be one of the most powerful tools we have for personal and professional planning, even though it requires a great investment of time and thought to get it right. And so, uh, like I said earlier, you want to uh, put in the work up front. Uh, and then it can be sort of your roadmap for the year. So one of the things that I tend to do is 
at the end of each year. I really look at, at the year ahead and I think about what goals I would like to meet in the upcoming year. And then I break that down uh, monthly uh, into monthly goals and monthly actions and monthly milestones. Um, and then, you know, every quarter or so, I will go back and look at my initial plan uh, to see if I am on track or if I need to make um, any adjustments. Um, and so that's just a really uh, good example of how you can put in the work up front. I usually take a full day um, sometime in December and just, you know, sort of plan away for the upcoming year. Um, and then by doing that, it also helps to avoid distractions because I really have a roadmap for myself for the entire year. And so I really can look at a month and say, you know, by November 15th, I need to have this done. By November 30th, I need to have this done. Um, and so if it is the 20th, of November and I have a deadline of November 30th, it helps me to plan if I can hang out with my friends or if I need to put in a little more work because I have this deadline for myself of November 30th. Um, and so also being able to make, um, make your goals powerful, powerful, powerful by making sure that they're specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. This is really the key for this entire uh, module. Um, and actually writing SMART goals, you know, can take a little bit of practice. So you have a couple of examples uh, in this module, but of course you can also look online for additional resources and examples. Um, and then you also, as you think about your goals for the different areas of your life, uh, as you, you know, if you choose to do the year ahead planning, um, one of the things that you can think about is, you know, what obstacles are you likely to face? Uh, you may have certain times of year that are really busy at work. And so as you're making your plans and your monthly plans, you want to fill that in. Um, if you have children, for instance, there may be a certain time of year that they are more, you know, busy with activities and things of that nature. And so that can have an impact on your plan. If you know that you struggle with doubt and confidence, then um, you want to build in strategies to overcome that. Uh, and so things that I mentioned previously, like affirmations, uh, having a really nice, colorful bulletin board with reminders about why you have the goals you have or what it will be like once you meet those goals. Um, things like that can really help. Reading really positive books, listening to great podcasts. Um, all of those different types of tips and tools and resources are um, available to help you to overcome, um, you know, if you have, uh, if you struggle with your confidence or you, you know, fear of failure, um, fear of success, there are lots of resources for that. And then more than anything, I want to encourage you, encourage you to celebrate. So, you know, as you meet a milestone or as you actually meet a full goal, uh, celebrate whether that's taking yourself out uh, for an awesome dessert or having a really uh, great dinner with family and friends, sharing the goal or milestone with them. It actually, for my clients, um, in celebrating, especially um, with family and friends, it actually has served as inspiration and motivation for their family and friends 
to um, actually do goal setting for themselves. Uh, and so again, this is the, the picture of a leader. Um, you're, you're a role model for other people and, um, you know, living their very, very best life. Uh, so don't forget to celebrate. Very, very important. Okay, and um, as in all of the other modules, I am happy and available to uh, have a complimentary call with you to discuss your leadership development goals uh, and the results possible uh, when we are able to work together through one-on-one -on -one coaching or perhaps some of the other uh, solutions that I have available to help people uh, increase their leadership intelligence, uh, influence, power, income, and position. You can make a, a click on the link, which will take you directly to my calendar, uh, and you can schedule an appointment from there. Um, I take um, uh, very few um, spots for one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, so that I'm really available for uh, the clients that I do have. So I encourage you as quick as you can to click on the link uh, to get onto my schedule so that we can talk to see um, what solutions are available for you uh, to become the leader that's inside of you. Okay, and then you, um, here are my uh, all of the places that you can find me. Uh, my website is bit.ly, it's a bit.ly link, Elite Coach Andrea. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Elite Coach Andrea. Um, I provide um, valuable, you know, leadership tips and skills and strategies on my social media platforms. I don't do a lot of memes and quotes and things like that. Um, but really try to provide value to my followers. And so I encourage you to follow me, um, you know, for things to continuously increase your leadership intelligence. Uh, and then if you have any questions or concerns, uh, you can also reach me via email. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed uh, this course, and more than anything, I hope that you uh, take hold of uh, setting your goals using the SMART uh, mnemonic um, because, you know, uh, time and time again, it is um, a goal-setting technique that has set people apart. And so I wish you much success, and I hope to talk to you soon.